Now let's talk about couples. 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 We are not talking about two people decided to live together for good news. We are talking about couples in the statics here. A couple is two forces. But not just two forces. A couple, to be a couple, have to be two forces. Have to be two forces. They have to be parallel. And they have to be um, in opposite direction. In opposite direction. That's a couple. Oh, one, one more condition. Two forces. Let's put it here. Two forces of same magnitude or equal magnitude. Equal magnitude. Two forces of equal magnitude. Parallel and in opposite directions. So if I have a force like this, and this is F1, and a force like this, and this is F2, you see them parallel right there. They go in opposite directions, right? You have here opposite directions. Uh, if, if F1 equal F2, Two in magnitude as a vector I will have to do something like this F1 equals 2 minus F2 if I do this like in the Cartesian coordinates F1 will be F1 I F2 will be F2 minus i and let's say we say f1 equals f2 equals f then we can say here f i equals minus f i so those are a couple here you can see the, the whole the whole thing that's a couple and well they will be uh, separated by a certain distance if they are not separated they are in the same in the same lines so it's basically zero you put two forces of same magnitude in the in, in in parallel and in the same line of action you are doing nothing you have one force in one direction and not in the opposite direction you have one force here one force here another force here so you basically have a big zero there is nothing there forces that balance each other completely that will be so uh, in order to have a couple that really does something you have to have some distance here let's call t all right that is a couple a couple doesn't produce actual uh, translation effect doesn't push or pull because the, ball, the, the, the forces balance each other because they are in the same in the same line or in the same direction but opposite uh, sense so they kind of balance each other but due to the distance they produce rotation there will be a, a sense of rotation like this right you can you can see it by the direction of the arrows um i hope that you guys can see that there is some sense of rotation the sense of rotation we can find it by uh, calculating the moments the moments with respect to any point in the space let's, let's do it here like on a figure let me draw a figure here let's say something like this again let's say that i have a couple applied to this i have a force here f1 equals to 10 newtons and I have another force here. Let's put it here. F2. If we want this to be a couple, this has to be also 10 newtons. They have to be in the same direction. Um, they have to be in the opposite sense and same magnitude. So let's calculate the moments of that couple with respect to point A here, let's say that each, each one of these squares is one millimeters. 
So if I want to calculate the, the summation of moments or the, 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 the total moments that these forces are applying to point A, if we say something like this, summation of moments of all these forces with respect to point A, and let's say that we're going to do positive, positive clockwise, clockwise, then that summation will be equal to force F1 doesn't produce moment with respect to point A, right? Because the line of action of that force goes through the point. So the, the distance from the point to the line of action is zero. So we have a, a F1 times zero. And the force F2 goes in this direction. So with respect to A, produce rotation in this direction. So it will be clockwise. So that will be a positive rotation. That will be F2 times the distance that if every, is, if every little square is one millimeter, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine millimeters. So it will be equal to 10 newtons times nine millimeters equals to 90 newton millimeter. All right, that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this distance is nine millimeters. All right, now let's calculate the moment of that same force with respect to the, that same couple with respect to point B here. Summation of moments with respect to B and let's say positive in the same clockwise direction, that will be F1 times, so now the distance from, from F1 to point B, let's, let's put it point, let's, let's, let's say that point B is exactly here. And this is point B. So this distance is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is seven. And from this, it's gonna be two, two. Okay, so we have moment of the force one with respect to B will be 10 Newtons or the force one times seven millimeters plus force two, times two millimeters, right? The distance from, from force two to point B, two millimeters. So it'd be equal to F1 is 10 Newtons times seven millimeters plus 10 Newtons times two millimeters. So this is equal to 70 plus 20, 90 Newtons millimeters. So you see that the couple produce the same moment with respect to any point that you want, any point. Let me do a, a, a more, a more, okay, a more um, general case. Let's, let's calculate the moment of that couple with respect to a point located located over here, point C, at a distance X, any distance, X, so it will be any point in the universe, X is any value. So the summation, the summation of moments with respect to point X, and let's do positive clockwise, will be equal to what? The fourth um, one? F1. Nine plus X. Right, right. The fourth one multiplied by nine plus X. Ah, in what direction? So first one goes this direction with respect to point C is this direction, right? So it will be mm -hmm. clockwise or positive. Now, force two. Force two. Oops. Force two. Force two times x, right? Yep. 
Yep. But but that goes in the opposite direction because this one goes like this, so it produces a rotation in this direction with respect. Yeah, to it's minus. You're right. Minus here. Mm -hmm. So that will be f one ten times nine plus x minus f two ten times x. So it will be equal to ninety plus ten x minus 10x so this goes with this equals 90 newton meter see so you see how the moment is still the same with respect to point a 90 with respect to point b 90 with respect to respect to any point at any distance x is still 90. so the couples produce moment no matter what you put in so couples you can move around very freely so it's the same if you put the couple here or if the couple is far away still the moment with respect to any point is going to be the same amount so it doesn't matter when you have the couple mm -hmm. you, it has the same value so you can repeat <coughs> you can repeat. Mean if d is constant then the 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 the, the, the moment doesn't change so mm -hmm. you can replace this let me put it right here let me put it right here. A moment like this. Ah, it's a song by Kelly Clarkson, no? A moment like this. Do you guys remember that? Or you guys are too young. You remember when the, when when Kelly Clarkson won the, the American Idol? You guys remember or you don't remember? And the day she won, she sang that song so emotional. A moment like this. Let me remove the, all this. Hey, Professor, I have a quick question for you. Yes, let me finish. Um, 90. Newton, yeah, one, one second. Let yeah, me, yeah, I'll let you. Just one second, look, because this is kind of amazing here. So you can have either this set here with your couple apply on those points, or this here with the couple apply in any point. 90 Newton meter apply anywhere is equivalent to the two forces in in, in those locations uh, that I showed at the beginning. All right. Yeah. What is the question? Um, it's a pretty minor one. The textbook treats the clockwise moment as negative and the counterclockwise is positive. Does it matter which one of those systems I use as long as I'm consistent with it? Yeah. Uh, very interesting question. In general, we consider, in general, we consider X positive going to the right, Y positive going to the to up right and this direction you we always consider positive like that right mm -hmm. that right we can use that no, not a problem we can we, we can use that but in a, in a specific calculation you can set up any any convention of science that you want in order to find an answer and then when you get the answer and you get the sign according to your own system of, of, of signs, then you know the direction of your moment. And then, then you can say, okay, it's clockwise or it's counterclockwise. Counter For example, here I said, clockwise is positive. So when I do my calculations, I found the 90 was positive, so this is clockwise, right? Same here. So at the end of my calculations, I look at the sign and then I look at my own convention. And according to my own convention, I can write here clockwise or counterclockwise. The important thing is to know in what direction you have the rotation. That's the important thing. We could say for now, okay, every time we talk about positive is counterclockwise. We can, we can do that. Or if we don't say anything, we should say, okay, if you don't say anything, I am assuming that you are using the convention that everybody uses, which is counterclockwise positive. I, I personally, I use the convention that is more convenient for me in a specific equation. 
And then after I finish the equation and I find my result, I put the label clockwise, counterclockwise. Hmm? That makes sense. You have to be the master of the universe. You don't have to let the universe govern you. You have to be the one that governs the universe. So you set your own rules as soon as the final answer is correct and you uh, express your final answer in a way that everybody understands. And everybody understands clockwise and counterclockwise that uh, is that has meaning meaning that has meaning for everybody so let's do a couple of examples here all right so well basically the figure shows what it is let's see if there is anything as two parallel system newton force are applied to a lever as shown determine the moment of the couple formed by the two forces okay we're going to calculate the the moment the moment produced by this couple when you have a couple, that, mamo, that, that, that couple produces a, a moment. And the moment is equal to the, the magnitude of the forces multiplied by the distance. I don't know if I, I, don't know if I said that specifically somewhere here, couples. I should say it here, sorry. If you remember this, the moment the couple produce is equal to Oh my goodness, sorry, that's a very big missing. Moment is equal to force times distance. That's the magnitude of the moment produced by a couple. The magnitude of the, of the forces, which is the same for both, so any value, <laughs> the magnitude of either one of the forces multiplied by the distance between them is the moment produced by the couple. And the distance you have to measure again at 90 degrees, right? So let's go back here. If you have this couple here on this, on this, on this example here, you have a moment, a force that goes like that, a force that goes like this, the force is 60. This one is also 60. If we can find the distance here at 90 degrees, 90 degrees, then the moment is equal to 60 times d. That's the magnitude of the moment produced by the couple. And most probably one of the questions is calculate the moment by calculating, uh, by using the distance between the forces. I'm pretty sure that's one of them. Let's see. Determine the moment of the couple formed by these two forces. A, by resolving each force into horizontal and vertical components and adding the moments of the two resultant couples. B, by using the perpendicular distance between the two forces. C, by summing the moments of the two forces about point A. Okay, very nice. So we will practice everything here. So let's go first. A, by resolving each force into its horizontal and vertical component. Then let's do it, let's do it here. So we have um, this bar. Maybe I use my little ruler, my my handy ruler, I love my handy ruler. So I have this line here. Mm. This line, and I have the forces. I have this force here. Before I forget, let's put it here very big. Before I forget, uh, guys, I always talk about the sketch, the diagram, the diagram has to be nice, big, and a size to put all the dimensions, the, ang the angles, but above all, there has to be a diagram in, in, in our problems here and in engineering in general. If you don't have a diagram, you don't know what you're doing. And if you, and if you start to set an equation, summation of forces, in the x direction equal to zero. If there is no diagram, you don't know what forces you're talking about. I am saying this because I received uh, quite a few homework where there is no diagram. And I, and I always say missing diagram and I take up some points. Uh, but, uh, uh, so please, very, very important. In, in all these problems, there is, has to be always a diagram. Always, always, always. Never miss the diagram. Okay, so we have here 55 degrees, and then we have here 20 degrees. 
this is 20 degrees. Now this guy is telling us first, by resolving each force into horizontal and vertical components. So we have to do horizontal and vertical components. So we put here the horizontal component here. Let's put the horizontal component here. And the vertical components, this component right here, and this component right here. Okay, so we'll have, maybe I should remove this line here, it's kind of confusing. We should put some names here because it's going to be, let's call this one F1 and this one F2. So this one will be F1X and this F1Y. This one will be F2Y, this will be F2X. So, uh, determine the moment of the couple formed by the two forces by resolving each force into horizontal and vertical components and adding the moments of the two resulting couples. So now we have two couples here, right? We have one couple, which is this F1X and this F2X. And we have another couple here, which is F1Y and here F2Y. So this, we have to find this distance here. Mm, D, let's call it dy because it's for the y components. It doesn't look very logic, but and let's call this one dx because it's the one that separates the x components. So can we find this distance? Can we have these components? So we have all the angles that we need. This angle is 20 degrees. Um, this angle down here is 55 degrees. So dx, dx will be equal to this distance here is 360 millimeters, 360. So dx is equal to 360 uh, cosine uh, sin 55. So that will be 294.9. 189, 189. dy dy will be equals to 360 times cosine of 55 206.49 206.49 206.49 and now we need to find F1X and F1Y. So F1X is equals to F1, the forces are 60, both of them. So this is 60 cosine 20, 56, 382. And FY will be here 60 sine 20, 20, 52, 1, 20, 52, 1. So we're ready to make the first calculation. The, the couple produced by the horizontal forces makes a rotation like this, right? Um, I'm gonna call it positive. I'm gonna call it positive, I'm gonna say, this is positive for me. Positive for me is clockwise. Doesn't matter. Or we can use positive counterclockwise, so we just know what everybody uses. This is the same. Now, this one produces rotation on this direction, right? So let's do the calculation. Um, X components or let's call it a, a, X couple. X couple. Let's call it mom X equals to the force. 
56.382 times 29.489 equals to one six. I'm gonna divide by 1,000, so I get this in newtons meters, not newtons millimeters. 16.626 newtons meters and is and is positive according to my convention here now moment why why couple m m y equals to the value of the force 20.521 times the distance 206 0.49 so it's going to be 20 0.521 times 206.49 4 newtons meters but this one is counterclockwise so this one is negative i have to put a negative here and here so if i want the total moment produced by that couple it will be the summation of these two will be 16 minus 4 16.626 minus 4.2374 it will, it will be 12.388 388389 newtons meters ne uh, positive positive if it's positive it's clockwise according to my to my sign convention if i get positive it is clockwise so this is the one that that is important it's clockwise all right so this is the this is the moment of the couple. I can't remove the sign here and just leave the clockwise. That's the moment of the couple. So in, in this case, we calculated the moment produced by those two forces as, as we get the, the components of each force in vertical and horizontal component. In that way, we created two couples. One couple with horizontal forces, another couple with vertical forces, and we calculate both both moments um, by multiplying force times distance, and we get the summation of those two, and that's how we got the total moment. Let's do the second, by using the perpendicular distance between the two forces. Okay, so now let's do the same calculation, but using the distance between the two forces. That distance, will be this distance right here, D. And what is that distance? That distance D, let's put it over here, is going to be 360 times sine of this angle. Let's see if we can find this angle. Let's make a little diagram here. This is 20 degrees. Uh, this is 55 degrees. So this is 35, right? 35 degrees, because all this is 55. 55 minus 20. So now the vertical line between those two forces is going to be this distance here. D equals to 360 sine 35, 360, sine 35, 206.5, 206.49. So the moment, we can do it very quickly, the moment will be the magnitude 60 times 206.49 equals to 206 times 60, 12, 389. 
12.389. I was sweating here. This is not going to give me the right value. This is not going to give me the right value. Look. Yeah. Same thing, right? Now the next one. I'm going to leave the next one for you. By zooming the moments of the two forces about point A. I should leave that one for you guys. Remember that I said that a, a, a couple a couple produces a moment. A couple of forces produces a moment. And that moment is, is, is a free vector. You can put it anywhere because remember that this moment is the same value no matter with respect to what point you calculate the moment. So you cal if you calculate the moment of those two forces with respect to point A, you have to find the same value, 12.4 you have to find the same value, right? And you guys know how to calculate moments. That's what you did last class and you were doing practice with all the examples I did and the example that you also ran on your own. So at this moment, you have to be able to calculate the moment of a force with respect to a point. If the force is a little twisted, crooked, and misaligned, you have to be able to find with some angles and some dimensions, you should be able to find the way to calculate that moment. Uh, is there by components or directly, directly by force times distance. So now we need to calculate the moment of, of these forces F1 and F2 with respect to point A. Everyone finds the, the best way that, uh, that, that you want. Uh, for example, let's see we can do it directly force times distance. If I have this, this, so I need this distance. Let's call it D1. And let's, let's call this, let's call this D1. And let's call this D2. If I can find that distance, D1 and D2, I can calculate the moment as F1 times D1, and that will go in, in this direction, right? And the other will be F2 times D2, and that will go this direction. Does everybody see that? Anybody doesn't see that? So the, mom, the moment will be the summation of those two moments. Let me put it right here. The moment will be F1, which is 60, times D1. D1 is equal to the total distance. If you guys remember the problem, the other distance was 520. You can barely see it's 520. Let's say it's 520. Let's say 520, because I don't see very, very clearly. So this is 520. So the total distance here is 520 plus 360 is 880, 880. So D1 is 880 times sine of this angle here. Anybody can tell me what is this angle here? That angle will be 55, this is 55. So this will be 55 minus 20, so 35. And the other will be, F2 will be, let's call it this, N1, N2, N1, and one equals, let's do this one. 60 times 80 times sine 35, 30 minus 4. In this direction. And the other M, M2 will be F2 times D2. F2 is 60, D2 is 
this one here, which is 520 sine of 35. 520 sine of 35 equals 17896. 896. In what direction? Clockwise or counterclockwise? This force here goes like this around point A. So this is, if this one is in this direction, the one F, F1. So I didn't, I didn't put any convention. So if, if we didn't do any convention, let's do the one that everybody uses. Counterclockwise is positive. So then we will have positive for this one. Counterclockwise here and negative for this one. So this is negative. If I take the summation, it will be this. 17, 85, 85, 12, 3, 89. Negative, negative 12.389 newtons meters. Negative, if we are using the convention that everybody uses, so negative is clockwise, so this is clockwise. So this is our answer. Here the sign, I don't care about the sign anymore because I put the, 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 the label clockwise. So let's see, we got the same thing. Yay! Right.